uh, have a, uh, a, a sort of a concerted plan of action to alleviate the problem of the traffic in uh, on the uh, uh, along the A40 corridor. So uh, I try to be very factual in this presentation, and I'd like to uh, start by apologising that I haven't got much environmental data specific to the A40 because it's really very very hard to get. You get broad terms district wide uh, environmental data, data, but not specific to set to specific corridors. So some some information, some facts and figures. Uh, Twenty two thousand vehicle and vehicles on average are carried daily on the A4, on the A40. And what is important is that the A40 is actually is a designated Laurel route as well for between Oxford and uh, Evesham. Um, the average speed is very low, as you can see, because it's ranging from 17 miles an hour to even 10 miles an hour. Uh, uh, the, the, the road was at capacity already in 2014, so six years ago. Uh, and now is way over capacity, uh, and effectively there will be an increase in, um, in in several hundred cars per hour, with a further delay by 2031, when all the other houses will be built uh, around Ainsham and, and around all the other parts of the, of, uh, of the district. Uh, in fact, 12,000 houses more are expected to be uh, to be built by 2031. Now, everyone who lives in a village in in our district knows that most people use car, uh, and often um, households have served, have got more than one car uh, unless they live on their own. Uh, if it's a family, they tend if they're a family of of adults or young adults, they all tend to have a car. So it's likely that there are houses with three cars, uh, which is pretty pretty horrendous in in terms of the situation alongside the A40 uh, corridors. Um, I will focus later on on uh, on the uh, uh, ancient Oxford to Bryce uh, rail route. Uh, which, as uh, all we can say for now, is I mean we, one of the first exercises for what was actually to try and walk part of the line a, a while ago. Um, it's really only very few bits and pieces of the line that are actually still there. Some major infrastructure uh, um, closer to Oxford, but that aside, many parts have been have been built over. Uh, particularly in in Ancient and and more so in Whitney. For those of you who live in Whitney, will know that the station the, the, re, the reason why Station Road is called Station Road is because it used to be a station, and all you have now is in fact offices and and uh, um, and light industries. So this is sort of an overview of the fact, and I'm going to take you now into some more specific slides that you will you where you will be able to actually see. So uh, the situation is it is. So what you can see here that is important that you focus on the dotted lines, which is actually the actual railways, and you can see that there is a, a fairly even distribution of of uh, distance to the nearest railway lines in other parts of the county, but right here there's absolutely no no railway links at all. In fact, in a study, a study by Rail Future, uh, Whitney is in one of the top in the in the list of the top um, towns uh, without of, of of its size without a proper rail link. I know that in the past RMP especially has sort of tried to focus on, on Hamburg and all that, but really, uh, as you know, I mean, it's okay if you live in Whitney and North Session and also Whitney, but anyone with anyone living south of the Great Barrier of the A40 will find it very difficult to, to reach Long Hamburg. By the time that actually they, they make any, an attempt to reach Long, Long Hamburg, very often they, they, it's easy for them to reach one of the nearest um, uh, station in, um, in Oxford. So here is the, is the, the area transport asset situation. This is the figure which I'm sorry goes only up to two, uh, 2012, uh, but it basically uh, proves the point in relation to the traffic flows on the various sort of parts of the corridor of the which makes up the um, the A40. Uh, it, it's just a very high number of traffic, which basically started round about the the, the late 80s uh, um, and and. And basically, you know, continued um, as such. Uh, no surprise about the traffic flow, except probably for the fact that 
you will see that if you wanted to avoid the traffic on the A40, you will have to leave jolly early and leave jolly and leave very late as well. So it's, it would only it would only be around about the sort of 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. where you'll probably be assured of a of a, of a reasonably fast journey along along the A40. Otherwise, you just very rapidly hit the sort of the the the, the congestion um, time, which stays like that very much until sort of six o'clock and, and beyond and then drops again. Uh, and you can see it's also a very similar on a Saturday and a Sunday. Of course, it starts late, but then during the day, the traffic is really pretty much the same as if you were on a Monday to Friday. So uh, a, a, a fairly un unique situation. So we've all heard about the, the, the Garden Village and the Park and Ride plan. Um, basically, it's, such, it's a huge development. Uh, it will, it, it is, it is estimated that it will be about 50% of all houses an increase in the Whitney uh, sub area, uh, a large park and ride for over, for over a thousand uh, spaces. Uh, lots of questions about it. I mean, will people use it? Um, will people, for example, get on a car from Carstone or Bryce Norton and, far, and villages further away and then uh, get as far as Ancient um, and finally drop the car and, uh, and join a bus lane, if there is a bus lane indeed, um, and then end up in the, in the same sort of type of traffic in, um, you know, in the outskirts of Oxford anyway. Who knows? And in, in any event, in order to be successful, it really should have very good connection to the neighboring villages uh, so that it ensures that it's just the, it's, an, it's a multimodal tra transport node and not just a simple car park where people drop their, uh, drop their cars and hopefully sort of get on, uh, um, on, on a bus. Uh, so a little bit of bus, uh, of bus facts as well. Um, there were proposals, believe it or not, to have a bus lane back in, in the 1990s. Um, there's some limitation close to Oxford in what is called the Duke's uh, cut in terms of the actual proper sort of infra infrastructure, the bridges there. Um, there's a possibility that if it, if the, what is the prefer preferred option is, is only it's only one bus lane, which is actually very, very common in, in many places, and especially in Oxford where you have parts of, uh, of the, um, you don't have bus lanes of, at, either, at both sides of the road, but you just have bits on one side and then you, you know you swap on to the other one. Um, this means that there will be limitation in terms of the space for uh, uh, cycle tracks um, and, um, and, and, and and bus lanes. Uh, there's options of obviously of having tidal flows with electronic controls on rows and and all that. And you know I think. Um, I don't believe that all these, these options have been fully finalized. Um, what is for sure, what, what has not been keen to uh, support um, is the, 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 the bus, the, the guided bus options that like they have, they have in, in Cambridge and other places uh, because it was already deemed ineffective and costly by a previous consultant back in 2001. Uh, and in the proof, as they say, the proof of the pudding in is in the eating. Um, for example, the Cambridge uh, guided busway uh, had an initial cost of 54 millions, which then grew to 200 millions. Now, they could have actually resurrected the rail line for 150 millions. And if you put that into perspective uh, with the um, uh, with, with the Whitney proposals, if there was indeed a guided bus lane, which we hope it there won't be, it would cost 40 million. If you then uh, multiply four times, you, you, you're likely to end up with, with 160 millions, which is really quite a horrendous price for a, a sort of a, uh, a, a transport, which is not really a proven uh, solution anyway. But I don't think we'll go that way. It's just to give you, put, put this into perspective. We look at the railways now. So what's happened to the railways? Well, the, the, the old Oxford Whitney Fairfall line opened in 1861, closed in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 1962. Never a very successful rail operation. It was mainly for, uh, um, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, suffice to the, uh, uh, to the local uh, industries in Whitney. Uh, and to the sort of uh, the various sort of farms and very few passengers actually used it. <clears throat> it was towards the end of its life used mainly as a freight link rather than a, than a, than a passenger's uh, link. 
Uh, back in 2001, the, uh, the County Council commissioned a very comprehensive report by a very well known firm of uh, transport consultant called Mott MacDonald. Um, and they basically came up with uh, with, a, with a, a raft of options about the uh, which range from uh, reopening the line as it was uh, uh, and uh, building different different tracks, uh, doing a train tram uh, a tram option, even going for, by via the Cassington Reservoir. Uh, so there's almost infinite uh, possibilities with prices to match, basically. We have what believe that possibly in the, in the first instance, a light rail option may probably be the more affordable and the more appropriate uh, for, uh, uh, for the district. Uh, you probably read, if you follow the local press, that lots of people from time to time come up with some uh, rather bizarre solution from cable cars to monorail, um, to which I'm always tempted to suggest airships. Um, uh, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, uh, none of these solutions have got a, a, a proven solution from a from a commercial perspective. That taking the monorail, for example, that might be one of the more uh, uh, feasible one. Uh, pretty much most of the monorails around the world be dismantled. Uh, they, and it's, it's just one. Of the, it's just one of the things. If they still exist, they exist in operate, they exist in in specific like semi inside transport hubs like airports, but certainly not for not to serve uh, a, a very wide range um, semi uh, rural um, um, network. So we we then we move on and this is a, a map that shows in fact the location of uh, the old railway line, which is the one in, in red here, uh, which goes back when it was uh, uh, fully operational, used to reach Fairfoot. Uh, sadly, never then went further because the plan was actually to go much, much, much further. Uh, and of course, uh, you can see that because it, 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 it was a dead end line, then it, it wasn't very, in that respect, a very successful one. Um, and it, there is nothing to be, uh, absolutely nothing beyond uh, in around uh, ledge laid on of, of, of Fairfoot. Lots of the, the the land which used to be with the land with the railway uh, ran has been built over uh, just in the same as I was mentioning to you before um, round about uh, Whitney and Ancham. Uh, there's a peculiarity also that from Ancham the, the line tends, goes south of the A40 here and actually um, it, it, it loops into, into what is effectively farmland um, and so it, it, they, you know, it wouldn't then be be serving anything else. Ancient is a big uh, problem because uh, the, 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 the the track closer to Ancient has been built over is by in, is currently in, in industrial estate. Possibly the, the bit that actually uh, the, which would be that would be easy to resurrect would be the bit between Yanton and Ancient, where most of the infrastructure is still there. Um, we, we calculated with the help of Rail Future a possible return on return on fare or on the rail revenue if the, we were to uh, have a rail uh, a, a rail option. Uh, we assume that um, about fifty thousand uh, people will the catchment will be about fifty thousand people. We had a very conservative assumption of of three uh, percent commuter rate by by rail, which is really quite low. And we also have a, we had a very low uh, uh, journey um, rate of eight pounds, and we expected with that to bring around about in terms of revenue two and a half million pounds a year, uh, with a possibility of amortised one hundred and fifty million pounds in in around about forty years. This is uh, rare future um, uh, uh, data. So it wouldn't be an unfeasible uh, pro proposition in, in commercial terms from a perspective, obviously, of long-term transport strategies, obviously, um, rather than you know having a quick a, a, a quick return for investment. Um, we are all for supporting walking and cycling, but we obviously see the we see the situation as in a uh, as a whole with a helicopter view. And it quite clearly, it, it would be unfeasible to, to try and push a one a single transport mode, like sort of cycling for, from Carterton to Oxford one way, whereas we are all for uh, 
stimulating and encouraging people to trans to to use the the bike to reach transport nodes use the railway line like most people do in many other places and then get off the train and then take the bike off and move off and and, uh, and cycle off or walk uh, in, into Oxford or any other destination. So we do see cycling as part of the, of the big plan, but certainly not just cycling as a solution because the distances are, are, are such that it would be unfeasible. One opportunity that the county council missed out was the patches of the, of the top of the infamous toll bridge, uh, which means that we're still left with, uh, with, with more traffic queues and, 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 and many more cars uh, um, to come in, um, in, in, in the next sort of a few years because uh, well, that's the way it is. It's a private bridge and, and, tolls, and, uh, and, and tolls have to be paid. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see, is quite sort of small, small print, but effectively this has come out from, again, uh, uh, the latest study that was commissioned again by the uh, County Council. County Council, by the way, is very keen on commissioning um, consultancy studies. Um, I mean, they, they, you know, don't, goodness knows how much is spent over the course of the last sort of 20 years on commissioning consultancy studies. Uh, but when it comes to the crunch, then, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a different ma matter. So you can see that there's cost of bus lanes that you know range. If you look at, look at the total, obviously, which is the one that is um, is it more um, is more appropriate for this conversation. What is actually rather what is uh, we question from the data that we got from uh, from from the consultants in this sort of late, latest URS uh, study was the re we we asked the reason why they those are sort of optional. Uh, bias, so-called bias allowance, and you can see, for example, that for whatever reason, uh, the light rail to Oxford has got a huge bias allowance of 75 millions. Now, if you took away 75, 75 million, or even if you took away uh, 60 millions out of the total of 242, you would get to a much more sort of a um, modest, in inverted comma. Uh, uh, cost for for the for the building of, of a of a line. We never got to the bottom because, as you can see in the previous column, there's already a contingency. So you you have a contingency on the contingency, so which actually accounts for almost 100 millions of contingency. So yes, we do know that there is there are issues, uh, but it seems to be a bit ex exaggerated and and and, in, and very much skewed. To uh, avoid considering the, the the rail option and focusing more on the on the road options. Um, now we clearly understand, that, for example, the second the, the the light rail with street running in Ancham and in, in, in Whitney. It's obvious that it would the less it would need a, a huge allowance, but it, it's a total pie in the sky. I mean, nobody can, would conceivably expect to have a, a, a train trams running into the middle of Ancham or in the middle of or, or in the middle of Whitney. So I mean, it's it's, it's really like almost as feasible as the as the monorail, basically. Um, the heavy rail is is obviously more expensive because the, the uh, engineering behind it is is uh, obviously much more uh, um, costly. Um, I'm not going to show you the video links because I know that the video link has been added to the uh, invitation, um, but I think the video link will give you a very a very nice sort of view uh, on. You know, in, probably in parts much more in depth. This is one of two, by the way. So there has been a further sort of a, a video on um, on on the Whitney of the Oxford Transport uh, website. Now, um, oops, that's it. So what I would like to show your attention now to the petition that we have started uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, if you haven't signed it, please do so. Um, please also, uh, if you have, please circulate the link. Uh, I believe we, were, we, we had around about 400, uh, um, uh, 400 people so far. We do really need a, a few more. Uh, and, and in fact, the more people, the only hope in the circumstances, given the, 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 the somewhat what um, uh, cold uh, approach that the existing uh, both district council and county council have towards the railway, the, uh, that sort of approach can only be changed if there is uh, popular demand, basically. Uh, and while, for example, we would always fault uh, the, the previous MP, at least 
uh, uh, spoken in favor of, of a railway, not done much, but at least spoken in favor of ra railways in his maiden speech, the current one, apart from mentioning the long hamper one and, and making you think that he's his, uh, his been his, his own idea. Uh, and that basically is, uh, you know, that's uh, the, 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 the business and the solution to the problem hasn't done anything at all. And in fact, he's dead against them having to even think about the, a, a possible rail link between um, Cardiff and Whitney and Oxford. So um, you can follow us further on all our social media channels. Please do so. You're very welcome to have a conversation with us, especially after this uh, uh, after this uh, chat today. Uh, now I have um, I was told I had uh, about half an hour. I think I'm probably um, a couple of minutes earlier, uh, but I know that often this uh, this topic elicits a lot of interest and, and lots of questions. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this interaction and I hope we can have a, a, a nice chat in the next uh, 20, 20 minutes, half an hour.